Councilman Youngman. Um, we, uh, so Councilman Youngman asked the, the, the drum group to do uh, another prayer song for us. So, so we'll, we'll start the meeting off in a good way um, and making sure that we, we uh, you know, just, just honor that. So again, uh, Bull, I don't know if you wanna, what song you wanna sing or if you have anything to say about the drum group or anything like that, but just feel free to go ahead and uh, do the song and, and however you wanna do it, so. for that for that so long um so we asked uh, uh councilman youngman to do the words of encouragement this morning again uh thank you for hosting us Ogola district and uh you know thank you again for that song and and uh you know it's a good way to start the meetings and just making sure that you know we always pay respect to the community that we're visiting so uh councilman uh, if you want to do the words uh, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Ogallala District. I want to say uh, thank you to the drum group for coming over. I know they got a lot of things going on to the, this week. so. But, uh, you know, as we started out, we a lot of us started out with different agendas, but as, as time moved on, you know, we came together and had a little, some struggles, but we stuck together and moved on, and um, I hope we continue on moving this way. Oh, Wopila. Um, thank you, Councilman, for those those words and just making sure that we're just, you know, I mean, there's there's times we might disagree, but at the end of the day, it, it's about working together and seeing past those disagreements and, you know, finding things we could work on. And, and you know, it is true that, you know, like people ran for different reasons, but, you know, I think you see um, the community coming together, you know, council coming together and stuff and making sure that we're always doing good for, for our communities and our people and, and things like that. Um, and council, uh, if we finish early, I know that there's a treaty meeting, I'm sorry, that the Black Kills meeting going on at the casino. So definitely wanna, I think Lisa wanted to invite you all out there um, to, to do that. And uh, if, you, if you have time to, in your schedules to make it out, um, to, to come out and, and just, just be a part of that. So just know that's a standing invite. And I think they're gonna do it tomorrow as well. So, and that starts at nine tomorrow, so. Um, uh, with that, uh, Secretary, you want to do the roll call? Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Wesley Hawkins, Sr. Blaine Little Thunder is going to be late. Cora Whitehorse. Here. Ryan Jumpin Eagle, Sr. Here. Gerald Knoyer, Jr. Austin Watkins, Sr. 
Tyler Yellowboy. Wendell Youngman Jr. Present. Ron Dubray. Oh. James Cross. Here. Ella Giancarlo. Here. George Dreamer Jr. Present. Dillian Spotted Bear. Here. Richard Ironcloud. Here. David Puyer. Here. Sonia Littlehawk Weston. Here. Jackie Sears. Here. Michael Carlo Sr. Present. Bernardo Rodriguez is going to be excused. Garfield Still. Here. Craig Dillon. Here. Okay, so there's 18 members present, one absent, one excused, and one will be late. So thank you. Um, thank you, Council. Um, so we'll move in into the honoring portion. So Councilman Youngman or Councilman Yellowboy, I know that you both had some left over, but Councilman, if you want to. Well, it's got one. Okay. We just have one today, Council. So uh, uh, Councilman Youngman's going to get ready for that. So uh, just go, we'll turn the floor to. Councilman Youngman. Good morning, everybody. Um, <clears throat> today we got one honoring left, and we're going to be honoring Barbara Donut. And um, I'd like to have the president read the the biography for. Uh, thank you, Councilman. Um, so, uh, Councilwoman Dolnif, uh, you know that, that's again that's the you know where you know when uh, people earn titles that that's you know that's always referred to you know. Like in the future, anytime I'm ever going to see you, I'm probably going to call you councilman or councilwoman because those are the titles that, that we earned and all that. And just like I call presidents, presidents or governors, governors. Again, it's just paying respect to that community service that you've given. So um, Councilwoman Barbara Dolnife was born to the late Daniel Dolnife and Bessie White Woman, Tio Shpaye. She grew up in Skokpa area and then attended school at OCS after graduating uh, she attended college in Arizona. After graduating, she returned back to South Dakota and started her family. She had three daughters, one passed away in 1980. She has five grandchildren and one great grandchild. Uh, Councilwoman Dolnive has dedicated her whole life to helping her people of the community. She has worked with youth groups, church groups, elders and children's children and the Ovala district. She has also helped the tribe as a council as a council member for the Ovala District. Ms. Uh, I'm sorry, Councilwoman Dolnive has helped bring the Recreation Center to Ovala District. She, is, she, always, she always helps anyone who needs it. She is willing to give you her last dollar if it meant that it would help you. Uh, Barbara has been on many boards and has helped to set up policies, procedures, making decisions that would, would or has helped to what is needed for the best interest of the people of our community. Ms. Dolnive has traveled all over and had the privilege of meeting the Pope. She has tried to do what is right for the Ovala Lakota Nation. Throughout her career, she has dedicated herself to helping. She has a caseworker for the Indian Child Welfare in Denver. She's worked for the U.S. Census Bureau and the Social Service Department for the BIA. She has served a lot of years as a victim witness advocate for the U.S. Attorney's Office in Rapid City, in which she retired from and is still currently an interpreter 
for the United States Eighth Circuit Federal Court. She has served two terms as representative for the Willow District. Her biggest accomplishment is starting the Waukesha Guwitian OTP. Her, uh, her compassion for assuring that our children are taken care of, even if the parents aren't helping taking care of them. As the victim witness advocate, she, had, she sits in court proceedings where a three-year-old three child got killed. And that was, and that's what led to her passion that no other child would have to die because there are no because there were no safe places to take them she went to ensure there's always a place that the child can have a safe environment to go to uh, the w, wgo has taken in more than 150 children since she since they have opened the doors um, again it's just making sure that we honor uh, miss uh, councilwoman dullknife and um, uh, councilman would you want to read the certificate Keller Musa Administration 2020-2022 Certificate of Appreciation in Honor of Barbell Drill Knife. The Ogala Sioux Tribe holds in high esteem tribal members who are exemplify of courage, bravery, fortitude, and generosity. Ms. Dolnife has demonstrated outstanding service to the community, is a respected leader and role model of the Ogala District and the Ogala Kota Oyate. Presented this 29th day of June, 2022, Signed, President Ke Kevin Killer, OST President. Barbara. Just stand with her. <laughs> you want to say a few words? Me taki e pi tona ya hiu kana yu hawo pila e chitab. To me today, I came because our executive board we decided to come to address the you council over taxes. Nobody told me I was getting honored today. And it's just a, such a surprise. I don't deserve it. The, the ones that deserve it are my kids. Last night, I had to take one in because somebody left it at the hospital and wandered around the hospital. You know, and so the social worker took him out there. You know, these are some of the things I do, and I'm so scared to come in front of you because when I do come and ask for money, I really get beat up. So I was scared. So I'm just really struggling out there. But I still feel like, and I do invite every, each and one of you to come to that home and look at our kids. We've got 10 kids now, what we're licensed for. The only one that did go was Sonia. Sonia, you know, give me clothes, baby clothes. Jackie stops in every now and then. You know, I like to thank all the people that do help me. Oglala Ridge gives me milk and eggs every now and then, milk and bread. You know, I really appreciate that because we don't have any money right now because IRS, we're dealing with our IRS, and we're gonna, I'm gonna beat that. And as soon as we do that, we'll apply for our funding. But we made a mistake on our IRS, and we've been suffering a year for that, a year and a half, I think. This is a big surprise. I couldn't believe it when my kids were sitting here. Couldn't believe why they were sitting there. And they told me that because I, I'm on a go, they knew I was coming here to you on taxes, and so they thought they'd catch me here. That was a big surprise for me. That you have opila après, and the executive board, opila trinka. And we'll can you hand a drum group sing a honoring song for her. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you again to uh, Councilman Youngman, uh, Councilman Yellowboy, and the Ogallala District. And uh, thank you again, Ms. Uh, Councilwoman Dolnay, for being here and being present. Um, I know there's an issue that, that you did ask to present on, but uh, again, we just make sure that we, uh, you know, we do these honorings just to remind the public of, especially in times of COVID, you know, we learn to make sure that we honor the people that we are honoring and for all the service that they've done to the community, but just to make sure we do that in person. And, Traditionally, these are done at powwows and um, you know other celebrations throughout the summer. But because of the COVID restrictions, which hopefully will get loosened pretty soon, um, we'll we'll return to those. But until then, um, we just want to make sure we do that. But again, it's, it is a good thing coming from the governing body of of our tribe just to make sure that we honor uh, members from all over the res. And we've been doing these uh, just over the whole this whole term. And uh, again, appreciate the councils. Uh, for offering different people to, to do this. And I think Porcupine, we're gonna go out there next month, I believe, uh, and, uh, and and do this. So um, we'll make sure that we uh, just continue this process. So again, we'll be left. Um, so moving on in our agenda. Uh, oh, go ahead, Councilman, sorry. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I'd like to thank the drum group and uh, the young men and the young boys that came to sing this morning. Um, it's good to hear 
those young voices makes me think of when I was singing in the shower this morning. But thank you guys both. Thank you guys for coming. I'd also like to make a motion to do a $500 uh, honorarium for Miss Barbara Dona. Second. Okay. Uh, motion made, second by Councilman DeBray for uh, the honorarium. Um, is there any discussion on that? Hearing none, uh, Secretary, will you uh, call the vote, please? Wesley Hawkins, Sr. Oh. Cora Whitehorse. Yes. Ryan Jumpin' Eagle, Sr. Yes. Gerald Knoyer, Jr. Yes. Austin Watkins, Sr. Tyler Yellowboy. Wendell Youngman, Jr. Yes. Rhonda Bray? Oh. James Cross? Yes. Ella Giancarlo? Yes. George Dreamer Jr.? Yes. Jillian Spotted Bear? Yes. Richard Ironcloud? Yes. David Puyer? Yes. Sonia Little Hawk Weston? Ha. Uh -huh. Jackie Sears? Oh, uh huh. Michael Carlo Sr.? Yes. Garfield Steele. Did he get back on? Craig Dillon. Yes. Ryan Jumpin Eagle Sr. Yeah. Um, council that passes uh, 17 yes, two not voting. Um, thank you. Thank you, Council. Um, so, and again, thank you to uh, the drum group in the, in the back. You know, thank you to Bull for mentoring especially those younger singers uh you know songs so important to our ceremonies and way of life and and especially this time and, and pay respect to all the sun dances going on and the ones that are coming up um, i know that some of our council members are at uh you know doing their their vows and commitments and all that so i just want to make sure that we're respectful and uh again well thank you for being here thank you uh for you know just mentoring these younger people and uh, you know they they put the O in Olawan, so let's make sure we we uh, we say that. So again, thank you, thank you, Bull. Whoop you Um So moving on, um, I think we. Uh, uh, oh, uh, go ahead, uh, Councilman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You know, across our reservation, we have a lot of individuals. You know that dedicate a lot of their time to the youth, and you know I'm so proud of Manuel, the way that he conducts his life. And the amount of recognition that he has received is little or none to my knowledge, but you know, he's well known across the Powell Trail. And we recently had an honoring for my aunt and his drum group came there and sang. And I would like him to come forward and the young men that's in that drum group, I'd like them to tell us their names and then I'd like to, you know, give them a round of applause for what they've done here in this community too.
Can you hear me? All right. First of all, it's always an honor when we get asked to sing and uh, being able to do that, the songs, they used to matter a long time ago. And so we try to uphold that with our song choices and things like that. But um, as I work with these young guys, some of them, this is their first time being in public. And I remember, you know, I'm not that old, so I remember, you know, <laughs> they keep me young too. But I remember I felt the first time I went out in public, I was nervous and excited and all of that. And they get to do it a little bit younger than I do. But uh, they're really proud to be around the drum. They're really happy to be around that. And uh, with the amount of things going on here, we need singers. How are we gonna produce them if we don't teach them? That's kind of my, and I'm getting older. You know, I might, sometimes I could sing like I was young, but sometimes I can't. Uh, I'm not that old, but uh, my voice is. So uh, when I can sit back and just watch them, it's, it feels really good. So that's what I'm trying to uh, get them. And then they could. They've gone around to graduations and feather ceremonies this past spring. Uh, some of these boys here, and they did it without me. And uh, it was, uh, I'm really proud. I'm really proud of that. They learned the songs. They have the confidence to do that. But uh, this is our future, some of them. And uh, I wanna say thank you also to those of you that sit on the Youth Affairs Committee. You help make this happen too. Well, we're gonna be doing this all the way to Oglala Nation. So if you have any boys that wanna learn how to sing or they sing and they wanna learn stuff, Mondays and Wednesdays at my house, we have dance and singing practice. We have a camp going on. These boys are at the camp. But we're gonna be singing this evening. Those of you from Oglala or around the area, you can stop by and listen to them sing. We got girls at camp that are dancing. They're learning things too over there if the girls have their own things. But also, I really wanna say thank you to the person you honored today because she's, she's been helping in the past few years. I don't advertise too much about what I do. I just provide it and I get help from the back sometimes. And if we wanna say thank you to Barb, we have a lot of food today too because she helped with us. And uh, so I wanted to acknowledge her in that way too. But we're gonna ask, I'm gonna ask these boys to introduce themselves and I, we work, kind of work on that, being able to say your name clearly. I always tell them, if you don't say your name clearly, somebody's gonna give you a new name. <laughs> So as they uh, they come through, they're gonna introduce themselves and here we go. Hi, my name is Ari Blackbear. Um, my name is Tristan Trejo. Yo. Uh, my name is, is Riley Scary Face. My name is Austin Parker. My name is Junior Red Feather. Brantley Bob Tober. Oh, was she here telling us at the match up in on a cote one bleach up here match up below? My name is Ethan Ledoux. All right. So next year, they're gonna be taking over. You don't have to ask me, you can ask them. <laughs> but I wanna say thank you all. Have a good day. Uh, thank you again, both. appreciate it. Thank you to the drum groups and thank you for that introduction. Um, I think we're gonna shake hands as well, so.
Okay, um, so we have 20 members present, and I think Councilman Youngman, uh, I'm sorry, Councilman Little Thunder is in the meeting at 11.15 a.m. Um, so with that, we'll, we'll proceed to our regular agenda. Um, I think uh, Chairman Carlo, you're up first, and I think uh, Senator Heinrich's on as well to, for one of those items. So, Thank you, Mr. Chair, Council. Today the Land Committee will be presenting two resolu an ordinance and a resolution, and I hope that we get the same support that Wakwamani District received yesterday. And the first resolution, Mr. Chairman, um, I would like to say something before I read it. The Land Committee, you know, we've been dealing with the OST Parks and Recreation Board since we got in. And under the leadership of Mr. Taylor Little White Man, you know, it is the total consensus of the Land Committee that safeguards are in place today that you know lacked in the past and uh, i totally believe that giving them back their charter i mean they will be totally responsible and still reporting to the land committee so we're hoping that the council supports you know their charter and uh, I'm going to go ahead and read the ordinance. And uh, if there's any questions, Mr. Little White Man is here to answer them. Ordinance of the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council of the Oglala Lakota Tribe. Oglala Sioux Tribe. <laughs> ordinance of the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council of the Oglala Sioux Tribe establishing the charter of the Oglala Sioux Parks and Recreation Authority Incorporated. Whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribe organized under Section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934, 25 USC, subsection 5123, by adopting a federally approved constitution and bylaws, and under Article 3 of the Tribal Constitution, and the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council is the governing body of the tribe, and whereas Article 4, sections 1F, 1K, 1M, and 1W empower the tribal council to manage the economic affairs of the tribe, protect and preserve the property of the tribe, adopt laws governing the conduct of persons on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation, and adopt laws protecting and recreational board is constituted and affirmed and the tribal council has determined to issue a new tribal government authority charter for Oglala Sioux Parks and Recreation Authority consistent with 25 USC section 7871 whereas the OST tribal council by this ordinance hereby adopts a new charter for the Oglala Sioux Parks and Recreation Authority Incorporated doing business as Oglala Sioux Parks and Recreation Authority, which is annexed here too, and 
whereas the nature of the Ogwala Sioux Parks and Recreation Authority Incorporated shall be a non-profit, non-taxable government authority corporation of the Ogwala Sioux Tribe, and whereas the governmental authority corporation is the whole is wholly owned agency of the Ogwala Sioux Tribe, shall be governed by a board of directors appointed and reporting to the tribal council, and shall have regular report reg and re shall report regularly to the tribal council on its operations, budgets, requests, and finances. And whereas the purpose of the corporation is to plan and develop the Oglala Sioux Cultural and Historical Park and to plan and develop related recreational and commercial developments and to license and assist with the management of the Oglala Sioux Tribe Parks and Dams and related purposes necessary to carry out its mission, that is, A, to develop and present an annual budget and plan of operation to the Oglala Sioux Tribe and report on the budget, plan, finances, and other matters to the corporation annually in August. B, to develop and operate park, recreational, wildlife, cultural enrichment, cultural tourism, and related activities undertaken in furtherance of this mission. C, to develop and operate tourism sites, facilities, accommodations, and services to evaluate and expand existing tourist attractions, facilities, accommodations, and services studies of an Oglala Sioux Cultural and Historical Park. E, to enhance the quality of the nature and human environment on the reservation. F, to license activities including camping, hunting, and fishing and related activities. G, to manage and conserve Recording stopped. natural resources, wildlife, and cultural properties dedicated to the corporation's oversight by the Tribal Council. H, the corporation shall be a non-profit, non-taxable public entity, and no part of its revenue shall occur to the benefit of the Board of Directors. Trustees are private individuals, except that reasonable compensation may be paid to employees, reimbursement may be made for authorized expenses, including employee travel, and reasonable board stipends and travel may be paid. I, to secure at large livestock unless and until reassigned to another agency, promote wildlife production and fisheries, promote native plants, and conduct agricultural research on beneficial native grasses, forestry and food sovereignty, and plant demonstration gardens, plots, and fill, fills as necessary in support thereof, and J, the corporation, Corporation shall not engage in political activity. Now, therefore, be it ordained that the Ogola Sioux Tribe hereby exercise its sovereign authority to obtain and establish a tribal governmental authority corporation, that is, the Ogola Sioux Tribe's Parks and Recreational Authority Incorporated, doing business as OSPRA, as a political subdivision of the tribe. C. 25 U.S.C. Section 7871, and hereby issues the Annex Charter to establish said corporation. Be it further ordained that this ordinance shall take effect immediately, and henceforth the Oglala Sioux Tribes Park and Recreational Authority shall be known as the Oglala Sioux Tribes Parks and Recreational Authority Incorporated, as provided in the Annex Charter, which shall take effect immediately. Certification 
And if there are any questions, Mr. Little White Man is here. I move for adoption and approval of this ordinance. Okay, so the motion made, second by Councilman Youngman, Councilman Whitehorse, and Vice Chair Puyer. Uh, is there any discussion on this item? Uh, Councilman, or sorry, Vice Chair. Sorry. Yeah, Mike, what is, the corporation should not engage in any political, political activity. What, what's, what is that? That would mean that they would refrain from supporting any type of political um, individuals that are running for office or anything like that. So the next question would be, does this next attachment go with the charter or what? Huh? What do you say? Where, where it says Article 1 on, does that go with this so it's attached? Mr. Little White Man, would you come forward? I have a question. Okay. Oh, well, hold on. There's, there's we, a couple. Could we do one at a time, please? Yeah. So, okay. So, I got... So, uh, we're still on Vice Chairman Puyer's questions, and then we'll come to... Councilwoman uh, Little Hawk Weston, and then Councilwoman Sears. Um, so we'll go in that order. Go ahead, uh, Vice Chair. Um, can you restate your question, please? So it starts with, on that, I wonder what page it is. And it says Article 1, Ogallasu Tribe. That's attached to this ordinance. So does it, that go with this ordinance? Explain to him that those are the bylaws that the uh, OST Parks and Recreation Authority would function under, correct? Yes, they're uh, okay. the... Okay, then, if that goes with it, then, then I have a question on the board of directors. Do they just stay on there forever, or how are they reappointed, or do they have terms of office? Because there's nothing laying out when that terms come up. I believe they're four-year terms. I know, but it don't state nothing in there about a four-year term. Yeah, uh, we probably have to put another section in there that states that because I thought I thought it was in there before, <laughs> you know. But, uh, That's what I was asking because it don't, doesn't say if we're establishing a new charter, then maybe that those terms should start yeah, it just says that the district during this election that the tribe has in November or terms of, so, office. Terms of office in there someplace. That's my suggestion, but. Because the way it reads now, they're just in there perpetual. I mean, they're, yeah. they're whatever. I believe under Section 2, it states that uh, um, that Mr. Ed Willow, Mr. Christensen, Mr. Pons are hereby confirmed in their existing terms and may be reappointed for additional term or terms supposed to be at the discretion of the Tribal Council. So I think there's got to be a, a, a some language in there that states that four-year term. Yeah. So can you make yeah. an amendment, Mr. Uh, President? I guess that was kind of my my question too, uh, for the to Mr. Little White Man is um, I wanted to know what the term limits were for these three interim board members, because I think these three were appointed interim. So I think we need to probably put some language in there to uh, say how long they're gonna be in there. And then uh, is this gonna go back up for election? Or uh, I think uh, the way why I'm saying that is when we took the charter of housing, remember when we did that, I think, uh, 
Mr. Little White Man was on that board and there's three members and we had like um, term limits, but we also had staggered terms within that charter to say when their terms would go up. So I think, you know, maybe something like that should be put in that section of um, section two, because right now the way it reads is uh, exactly what Mr. Puyer said. Is this like perpetual? They're just in there for whenever the council decides to put somebody else in there. So I think we need to maybe put some language in there. I don't know if, yeah, election process, maybe like Davey saying, I don't know if they're gonna start that this coming election. Are they gonna be sitting in there till this election and then they go up for election? At the present time, those individuals we thought were appointed for a four year term. But if the council requests that, you know, an election be done, you know, I could have uh, Taylor with assistance of their attorney draft uh, language in this and we could bring it back to land committee for action that would have a uh, election of officers in there. Yeah, I think that would uh, probably be good. I think um, it's not saying that the three gentlemen could run again, but I think just to make sure that uh, we have something in place to say that there's going to be election or they're going to be how we're going to reappoint them because otherwise they'll be they'll sit in there for for perpetual <laughs> if we if we could go ahead and uh, approve the ordinance uh, mr little white man will work with the board and the attorneys and bring back the appropriate um, um changes that will be incorporated in there if that's okay with the council so could you make that part of your motion that would be part of my motion, Mr. Chairman. Okay, uh, so noted. Um, uh, so is that was was that your questioning too, Councilman? Was around the same issues that uh, Vice Chair Puyer had, or did you have additional questions? Oh, uh, Councilman White, uh, Councilman Little Hawk question. Oh, those you were. Okay. That's a, yeah, okay. same okay. thing. So I think if uh, Mr. Carlo could uh, amend his motion to include that then um, that can come back to council with those changes okay. or addition amendments. Okay. Okay. Councilwoman Sears and Councilwoman Whitehorse. Yes, um, I have I have just one question. Um, it's regarding the nonprofit status. Uh, maybe our attorney can kind of, or, or Taylor, but we do, you know, being a charter, can that also be a nonprofit? because the charter will be generating revenue, you know, like from the hunts or the fees, park fees. Um, so was that something that we needed to address too? Can, can we have an attorney's opinion? Um. In regards to the uh, nonprofit status, uh, that's just to uh, where where uh, we can apply for uh, uh, grants and uh, um, it kind of gives us a, a a better leeway of uh, of receiving them uh, grants individually for our our program. And there's two options of being a nonprofit too. You can either be a tribally um, approved uh, nonprofit, or or we can go through the state. But well, I'd like to stay as a tribal nonprofit. Uh, Councilman, uh... well, I'm still not clear on it because I I is it is it uh, allowable? You know, if you're going to be applying for a nonprofit status and you're generating revenue, would that be something that um, would hinder any kind of grants that you're applying for for nonprofit? Um, Steve, or I don't know if Thomasina's on, but or anyone in the legal. 
I, I am on the call, President Killer. Um, Did you have a question? As I understand it, is is the Parks Authority going to generate revenue from some of its activities? Is that the concern? Yes. There there are rules about if if it is a nonprofit organization, there are rules about generating revenue and what you can use that revenue for. Um, um, they'll obviously, if they apply for and receive 501c3 or any other federal nonprofit status, they'll have to comply with those federal rules about dedication of revenue to charitable purposes. And um, without knowing a whole lot more about what the revenue is, it'd be hard to answer that in the abstract right now, but they will have to comply with those rules. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you, uh, Councilman. Uh, Councilman Whitehorse. I, um, I just wanted to make a suggestion and, and why, why don't we just add a sentence to section two of article five, where it says the current board of directors that is Jim Redwillow, Lance Christensen and William Pons are hereby confirmed in their existing terms and all future appointments to the board run through the tribal election process concurrent with the tribal council and certified by the tribal council. I mean, that would simplify the whole process. Yeah, and then just then we don't have to bring it back because it probably won't come back this term if we send it back anyway. Josh. I am I am in support of that, Mr. Chairman. If if we change the wording to read exactly what Ms. Whitehorse says, and then would we have to do a separate motion to approve the um, articles? Sorry, you can just make your motion to approve with amendments. Reinstate my motion, Mr. Chairman, to approve the ordinance and the articles with amendments that we've discussed. Article 5, Section 2. Article 5, Section 2. Okay. Motion um, to approve. Motion to with approve. Those. I think there was a second by, uh, I think it was Councilman Youngwin. Um, is there further discussion on this item? I have one. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Councilwoman. Um, uh, I just wanted to bring forth a question that was asked from one of our district members to you was, um, what about the executive director position? How is that, uh, how was Taylor selected or was that advertised? That's the question that was asked. He was appointed at one particular time by a tri former tribal council and his position was reaffirmed by the land committee. And I believe we took it on the council, but I'm not sure if we did that. Can you clarify that Mr. Little White Man? I, I believe it was just a committee action. I, I don't think it went to the tribal council. I think it did. But, uh, um, uh, I guess I guess it might it might have went to the tribal council. Maybe we could have the secretary um, investigate if we did do that. Um, thank you. Uh, Councilwoman, do you have No, else? I just think um, what Mike said, you know, to maybe we can get the action or something. Okay. Uh, I think uh, the secretary is requesting that. 
Uh, Vice Chair Puyer. Once this is approved, if it's approved, then it would be up to the board of directors to, to me, um, select or advertise however they're going to do it, rather than coming here. Um, is that a comment or question? No, that would that would be the way I'd look at them because then they're they're a chartered, so they would do the selection of whoever they want. All right. Um, Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilwoman, a little hot question. You know, I was gonna <clears throat> say almost the same thing as what Mr. Puyer said, but I think that when, um, just kind of learned from all of this, when we took the charter of the housing, I think some of us council were on council then, I think 2008, and we, the council appointed the interim uh, CEO, the director of that charter. And so today, I think we should do that. And if, and I think that once we put that uh, person in, then the board of directors uh, advertised, and then they made their selection, and they put that person back in. But I mean, that's just what I wanted to run by the council, because the housing charter was uh, was basically done that way too. I will second your motion on that. So if you want to. Run that as a separate motion. Run yours first. Okay. I could make that motion. Okay. Yeah, I mean it's just good to do that for the record. So, um, so, so again, on on uh, Chairman Carlos' motion, is there any other further discussion on that? Chair. Oh, shoot. Computer where we're um, recording get to a hard drive. So, okay, I'm just backup. making sure. Okay. Uh, thank you, Councilwoman. Um, so, Secretary, you want to call the vote on Chairman Carlos motion? Wesley Hawkins, Sr. Yes. Blaine Littlefender. Oh. Cora Whitehorse. Yes. Ryan Jumpin Eagle, Sr. Yes. Gerald Knoyer, Jr. Yes. Austin Watkins, Sr. Tyler Yellowboy. Yes. Wendell Youngman, Jr. Yes. Ron Dubray. Oh. James Cross. Yes. Ella Giancarlo. Yes. George Dreamer, Jr. Yes. Jillian Spotted Bear. Yes. Richard Ironcloud. Yes. David Puyer. Yes. Sonia Little Hawk Weston. Ha. Huh. Jackie Sears. Here. Michael Carlos Sr. Yes. Garfield Still. Not voting, I just got back on. Craig Dillon. Uh, council that passes 18 yes, one no, one not voting. Thank you, Council. Um, is there another motion that, uh, Councilwoman Little Hawk Weston? Yes, my motion was to um, appoint Mr. Taylor Little White Man in as the, is it uh, CEO of Charter of um, Parks and Recreation? And uh, I think that, and to leave it up to the Board of Directors to advertise and make their appointment of that position. That'd be my motion. Okay. Couldn't, couldn't we just do it as them to ratify and confirm our selection? I didn't hear you. Wouldn't the motion be that the, the board of directors ratify and confirm the selection? I'll second that motion with that amendment. Okay. So motion made, seconded by uh, Chairman Carlo to uh, approve of that. 
Is there any discussion on this? Uh, Councilman Jumpin' Eagle and Vice Chair Puyer. Uh, go ahead, Councilman. Chair, once we take this action today, then it's up to that board what they want to do. We don't have that authority to tell them what to do because they have the charter back. So I don't think we need to even make any motion, just move forward. Uh, Vice Chairman. Vice. That's basically what I was going to say too, because that board can't overrule council action. Um, Councilman Steele. Well, I think we're all on the same lines. You know, if, if we're given the charter back, then that's no longer our decision. That's up to the board. They have their own process, their own policies. You know, we, we can't give the, the board, you know, we can't give the charter back and then take this action because then we're violating their process. Uh, thank you, Councilman. Uh, Councilman Sears. Well, I thought that um, he said the land committee appointed him and then someone said the council did. So somebody was supposed to get us the documents or something because according to him, the council didn't put him in, it was the committee. Okay, uh, thank you. They're still looking for the documents. Um, uh, Councilwoman, little hot question. You know, I don't want to confuse the decision or the motion I just made, but I'm just saying that that's how we did it with the Charter of the Housing. And that was no problem there because we did that. I think Ms. Carlo was on council with us, Mr. Dillon, Mr. Dubray. There were some of us on council back then that uh, we took the action to do it that way. And, um, and I think Mr. Lil Whiteman remembers that. And so I think just doing it this way would um, just give that uh, board uh, the go ahead to advertise it and they do their selection at that time. But right now I'm just saying that we give them that based on giving the charter back too. Well, you know, Sonia, there's some new sheriffs in town now, so. <laughs> um, so the secretary did find that, the, I don't know if it was resolution, but. Oh, you could you could read it. Um, it is ordinance um, 1910, and it is when you when they suspended the charter of the Ogallonsu Parks Board for 60 days, and they removed immediately the board of directors. At that time, in one of the be it further ordained, they did. It says be it further ordained that the Ogallonsu Tribe does state that. Mr. Taylor Little White Man shall remain as interim director of the Oglala Soup Parks Board Incorporated. And this was done by Ordinance 1910 on March 26, 2019. With that being said, Mr. Chairman, I retract my second and I'd like to move forward on this. Also, I have a question for the council in the land committee recently we met regarding the land buyback and it was requested that we um, identify a contact person from the tribe and in the committee we selected the uh, director of the land committee as that contact person and we asked that the chairman sign a letter to that effect does that need to come through this council body too on that selection or is it appropriate that the chairman just sign that letter question for council? Um, Point of ever... order, Mr. Chair, do we have, I had a motion. I don't know if I got a second. I think Mr. Carlo seconded. it. Um, he we retracted to your- Yeah, your... I, but- uh, so you still have a you still have yeah. a motion, but is there? Um, I don't know if the, uh, Mr. Carlos seconded. He he Could he seconded it and he retracted it. So you he don't retracted have, his second. So yeah, you, so you have a motion. Is there a second? Well, because of second by Councilman Whitehorse. Okay, so there's still a motion on the floor. So okay, so is that your motion, Cora? No, that's your motion. Oh, well, my motion. Okay, so she seconded my motion. Yeah. Okay, so we so, could run that motion. Yeah, but we're still on the discussion. Uh, the secretary just read where it was approved through the 
as an interim. And so this is, is there, so is your motion making this a, uh, I don't Well, I think the motion should just be that uh, he be, because once we take the action today, he's still the director, interim director tell that board advertises the position. Then they'll put, they'll select that position. I don't know how long, many days they're gonna advertise it, but that's kind of where, what I'm talking about. Okay. Um, go ahead, Councilman Carlo. Thank you, Chair. Good morning, everybody. I, I don't know if it necessarily has to be advertised, but I think the board could reaffirm the action that, um, you know, appointing Taylor. I think, you know, that we're just giving that decision back to the board, however they want to, however they want to deal with that issue. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I'll go. go ahead and amend my motion to um, to just um, reaffirm the um, Mr. T Taylor Little White Man as the, the CEO of the Parks and Recreation. And um, I guess it'll be up to the board to uh, decide on how they're gonna move forward to so keep him uh, advertised or keep him in. That will be up to them, but my motion is just to reaffirm him. Okay, no, that's fine. Um, so there's having motion been made and seconded by Councilman Whitehorse. Um, is there further discussion on this item? Hearing or seeing none, Secretary, call the vote on that, please. Wesley Hawkins, Sr. Yes. Blaine Little Thunder. Oh. Cora Whitehorse. Yes. Ryan Jumpenigo, Sr. Yes. Gerald Knoyer, Jr. Yes. Austin Watkins Sr. How? Tyler Yellowboy? Yes. Wendell Youngman Jr. Yes. Ron Dubray? How? James Cross? Yes. Ella Giancarlo? Yes. George Dreamer Jr. Yes. Julian Spotted Bear? Yes. Richard Ironcloud? Yes. David Puyer? Yes. Sonia Little Hawk Weston? Ha. Huh. Jackie Sears? Here. Michael Carlos Sr. Yes. Garfield Steele. Out voting. Craig Dillon. Yeah. Uh, council that passes 18 yes, one no, one not voting. Thank you, Council. Um, Chairman, your next item. Mr. Chairman, I threw a question out there to the council on, you know, appointing Mr. Richards as the contact person on this buyback, and that was requested to be done in a timely fashion. So is it the consensus of the council, the action that was taken in the land committee to authorize the chairman to sign that letter, is that sufficient, or do I need to ask for permission to have that? Motion it. I'll make that motion then, Mr. Chairman, that the selection of Mr. Sean Richards as the contact person on the Indian buyback uh, be ratified here today. Okay. Uh, motion is there a second? Second by Councilman Watkins and Councilman Dillon. Any discussion? Hearing or seeing none, Secretary, call the vote, please. Wesley Hawkins, Sr. Ratify, yes. <laughs> Lane Little Thunder. Oh. Cora Whitehorse. Yes. Ryan Jumpenigo, Sr. Yes. Gerald Canario, Jr. Yes. Austin Watkins, Sr. Yes. Tyler Yellowboy. Yes. Wendell Youngman, Jr. Yes. Ron Dubray. Oh. James Cross? Yes. Ella Giancarlo? Yes. George Dreamer Jr.? Yes. Jillian Spotted Bear? Yes. Richard Ironcloud? Yes. David Puyer? Yes. Yeah. Sonia Little Hawk Weston? Here. Oh. 
<laughs> Jackie Sears. Oh, uh huh. Michael Carlos Sr. Garfield Steele. Craig Dillon. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, so that passed 19 4 and went out voting. Um, that, that's okay, Councilwoman. I, I feel like that too. I don't feel like saying here when I'm supposed to be saying something else. So. Um, no, I think there's one more motion uh, that Chairman. Chairman Carlo, you have one more motion? Yeah, one more. yeah you got one. Okay. You have one more? Yeah. Next uh, resolution. Correct. Next resolution is a resolution of Ogala Sioux Tribal Council of the Ogala Sioux Tribe. Resolution of the Ogala Sioux Tribal Council of the Ogala Sioux Tribe confirming use of funding from the Indian Buffalo Management Act to support and enhance existing buffalo or tribal buffalo herds in current buffalo habitat at locations. Whereas the Ogala Sioux Tribe adopted its constitution and bylaws by referendum vote on December 14, 1935 in accordance with section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934-25 USC section 476 and whereas article 4 of the constitution establishes the Ogala Sioux Tribal Council as the governing body of the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation and whereas Article 4, Sections 1A authorizes the Tribal Council to negotiate with federal, state, and local governments, and whereas Article 4, Sections 1I or 1L authorize the Tribal Council to purchase under contempt, condemnation proceedings land for public purpose, and whereas Article 4, Sections 1S authorize the Tribal Council to promulgate and enact resolutions and ordinance pursuant to its legislative powers and manage all economic affairs and enterprise of the Oglala Sioux Tribe. And whereas the Land Committee has endorsed the implementation of tribal buffalo projects on specific tribal lands. And whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribe as a long-standing member of the Inner Tribal Buffalo Council has supported the development of Indian Buffalo Management Act and efforts for congressional adoption of the IBMA, which will create a permanent program for tribal buffalo restoration and management within the Department of Interior Bureau of Indian Affairs. And whereas the Indian Buffalo Management Act if passed by Congress will authorize an annual appropriation of $14 million for distribution among the 79 member tribes of the International Tribal Buffalo Council to assist tribes with buffalo restoration and management on tribal lands. And whereas the Land Committee supports the Indian Buffalo Management Act and the benefits the IBMA will provide the Ogala Sioux Tribe for Buffalo Restoration and Management, Economic Development, Opportunities and Reintroduction of Buffalo into the Diets of the Tribal Membership. And whereas the Land Committee recognized that the Tribal Members Producers have concerns that funds from IBMA if adopted may in incentive the cancellation of current reservation grazing units utilized by cattle producers to expand current tribal buffalo pastures and whereas the land committee in support of the objectives and efforts of the Indian Buffalo Management Act and to alleviate concerns of tribal cattle producers utilizing reservation units adopt the following. Therefore be it resolved that funds received by the Ogala Sioux Tribe for Buffalo Restoration and Management pursuant to the Indian Buffalo Management Act, if adopted by Congress, shall not be utilized to expand current tribal buffalo pastures on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. Be it finally resolved that the President is hereby directed to execute the 
appropriate documents to implement this decision. Certification motion to approve. Second. Okay, motion made, second by Councilman Dubray. Uh, is there any discussion on this item? Hearing or seeing none, uh, Secretary, call the vote, please. Thank you. Wesley Hawkins, Sr. Oh. Blaine Little Thunder. Oh. Cora Whitehorse. Yes. Ryan Jumpin Eagle, Sr. Yes. Gerald Kenoyer, Jr. Yes. Austin Watkins, Sr. No. Tyler Yellowboy. No. Wendell Youngman, Jr. Yes. Ron Dubray. No. Oh. James Cross. Yes. Ella Giancarlo. Yes. George Dreamer, Jr. Yes. Julian Spotted Bear. Yes. Richard Ironcloud. Yes. David Puyer. Yes. Sonia Little Hawk Weston. Ha. Huh. Jackie Sears. Oh, huh. Michael Carlos Sr. Yes. Garfield Steele. Yes. Craig Dillon. Yes. Uh, council that passes 19 yes, one no. Uh, thank you, Council. Uh, Chairman Carlo. Uh, That's it, Mr. Chairman, for the Land Committee, and I thank the Council for your support. Okay, thank you, uh, Chairman. Uh, Chairman Gennard, Jr. Yes, I just, <clears throat> I figured it would be appropriate to ask this question while we have Council, but also while uh, the Land Committee was going after it. Um, currently, we have in the works uh, uh, Fourth of July season coming up with fireworks. And the reason why I wanted to bring it up with uh, land is what, what, do, what do we think is our plan going to be going forward and how we're gonna mitigate all the fires that could potentially uh, come up. Just food for thought for everyone. Um, so was that for Councilman Carlo? Or, or law and order, maybe? Uh, Food for thought for the council. Okay, <clears throat> just, just comment. So. Just let them fly. Uh, final order. So. No, it, it, is, it is a valid concern. I was just talking uh, with that, because this is how dry it's been, and uh, or it's getting dry, you know, um, and just making sure that we're prepared all over. Um, so last year, I think we had multiple fires, and it was it was tough to kind of get around to all of them. So just uh, so something to think about. Um, so moving on, um, we're on the OST Law and Order Committee. Uh, Chairman Watkins, I know you have items. Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Chairman. Hold on. Oh, go ahead, Council. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> uh, for youth affairs, I know we don't have any items, but I'd just like to take the take a moment here on the floor just to. Uh, Acknowledge that we had a basketball team go over to Europe, more specifically in Spain, to play in a tournament, and they were selected to represent the United States. And we have a, a few players. Uh, Sonia, if you you would mind uh, uh, saying their names once again, but they they went over there and they took first place in this this tournament over in Europe. Yeah. 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 I think um, you know the 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 young man is young boy is from. Uh, our district of Wakbamni, and he did. They did. They're arriving home today at 1:30. They're flying back. They went all the way to uh, Spain, and uh, they did represent the USA, but also representing our tribe. And uh, the young gentleman is uh, Mr. Dominic Gospear. And I don't know if there's anyone other than him that were on that team. Maybe. Uh, Maybe something will come forward, but we only received the name of uh, Mr. Dominic Gospear, uh, who also attends the Oglala Lakota County Tech School and plays basketball for them. And so they did take first place over there in uh, Spain. And so I just, you know, shared that with uh, Gerald this morning 
under the Youth Affairs and also shared it with uh, Ron through Education Committee that maybe down the road we should uh, maybe honor the them. There's, I think, another one that uh, Ron probably will be uh, sharing with uh, Gerald that is also another youth that uh, we would like to maybe honor at the next uh, special uh, council, Mr. President. So I just wanted to uh, say that today, I think the family is going to be uh, welcoming him back. He is from the uh, Calico community of Wakabamini District. So today I just wanted to share that uh, on behalf of the uh, Rodriguez family and the Ghost Bear family. Thank you. Thank you. I have a comment. Uh, go ahead, Councilwoman. Yes, I just want to say congratulations to Dominic and the family for, you know, supporting him and getting him over there. I talked to the mother this morning, the grandmother, and she did say that there was over a hundred and some applicants to go and he was selected. So that's a big accomplishment and something that our tribe should be um, <clears throat> very proud of. So I did let her know that the youth affairs will be meeting and that would be going um, to, for an honoring at that time with the youth affairs. So congratulations, Dominic and your family. Uh, thank you, Councilwoman. Just forgot to mention that too, congratulations to uh, the young man. And <clears throat> I think that um, these are really some uh, outstanding accomplishments that these young um, youth are doing, you know, in our schools today. And I think all the honorings that the youth affairs have done so far, you know, I think that it's very appropriate that these come under their committee to do the honoring. So with that, just want to congratulate him, uh, you know, in his uh, endeavors and, and just, you know, I'm glad that he made it over there safely and they're coming back today at 1.30. So thank you, Council. Okay, thank you. Um, moving on, um, so uh, I think we're at OST Law and Order, uh, Chairman Watkins. Are you finished? Hold on, it's gonna choke you. Wait till you're done, then, then I'll okay. start. Okay, oh, you, you, okay. So, okay he's, he's still, okay, <laughs> so. Um, yeah. I was just going to say thank you. And now back to your regularly scheduled programming. All right, okay. thank you. <laughs> um, we'll start off with the ordinance of Oglossu Tribal Council, the Oglossu Tribe, Incorporated Tribe. Ordinance of the Oglossu Tribal Council. The Oglossu Tribe amending ordinance number 16-25 as amended by ordinance number 20-56 establishing the Oglossu Tribe and House Legal Department. Whereas the Oglossu Tribe organized in accordance with the section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934, 25 U.S.C. subsection 476, on December 14th, 1935, by adopting federally approved constitution and bylaws, the Tribal Council's governing body of the tribe, and whereas Article 4, Section 1B of the Tribal Constitution empowers the Tribal Council to employ legal counsel for the protection and advancement of the rights of the Ogasu tribe and its members. In Article 4, Section 1W, empowers the Tribal Council to adopt laws promoting the health and general welfare of the tribe and its members. And whereas in order to fulfill its role in retaining legal counsel for the advancement and protection of the rights of the tribe and its members, the Tribal Council wants to create a legal department staffed with in-house attorneys and support staff to reduce the cost of retaining outside legal counsel while maximizing legal services available under a limited tribal budget and centralized under one department. And where, whereas the Tribal Council enacted ordinance number 16-25, August 30th, 2016, as amended by ordinance 
September 1st, 2020, amending and rescinding ordinance number 14-20, establishing an Oglawsu Tribe in-house legal department. Whereas the OST department is in need of updates and revisions, and whereas the law and order committee believes that the proposed ordinance will accomplish the objectives of the tribe as set forth above and recommends the tribal council the adoption of the proposed ordinance now. Therefore be it ordained that the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council hereby adopts the following ordinance amending Oglala Sioux Tribe Ordinance Number 16-25 as amended by 20-56 with regards to Oglala Sioux Tribal Legal Department shall read in its entirety with additions and bold underlined text and de deletions and bold right through text. Section 1, establish of Oglala Sioux Tribal Legal, Tribe Legal Department. A, there is a hereby established a new department to be known as Ogala Legal Department. Legal Department. B, the legal department will be under the direct supervision of tribal council and will answer only to the tribal council. Section two, location of legal department. The Ogala Sioux Legal Department will be based out of Pine Ridge Agency and offices provided by Oglala Sioux Tribe. Additional offices may be established throughout the original territorial boundaries of Pine Ridge Indian Reservation as deemed necessary by the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council. Section 3, Convention of the Legal Department. The Legal Department will be composed of the following personnel subject to budget funds available and necessities. Number one, three in-house, three in-house attorneys, two, one paralegal office manager, three, one legal secretary, four, one receptionist, file clerk, five interns as needed. B, the office manager be the direct supervision of all merit employees in the department. The attorney shall be politically appointees eligible for all benefits and merit awards made available by tribal council to regular employees of the tribe and will serve for a two-year term that coincides with the terms of the then seated council. D, they will be appointed by tribal council by way of resolution and this ordinance shall serve as a scope of work and level composition. E, all personnel of the legal department other than attorneys will be merit employees and subject to hiring discipline under the tribe personnel policies procedures ordinance 18 slash 22 as amended. F, all interns working in the legal department will be approved by attorneys following submission of a res resume writing sample and references. If the de departmental budget allows, the interns will be paid for the time at a rate approved by council. G, all equipment, office equipment supplies, including intern connections, legal research tools, phones, website costs, drug test costs, travel expenses, and other expenses necessary for the operation of the legal department will be provided with budgeted funds available. H, Additional personnel may be necessary, such as paralegals. Such personnel may be added to the legal department as authorized by tribal council upon recommendation of the majority of the in-house attorneys. Section four, preference and hiring for Oglala Sioux Tribal Legal Department. A, preference and hiring attorneys for legal department will be as follows. One, Basic qualification for position has been met. B, one under B will be enrolled tribal members. Two, descendants of tribal members who have pending application for enrollment. Three, enrolled members of other federally recognized tribes. Four, enrolled members of non-federalized recognized tribes. And five, non-Indians. Section five, qualifications of attorney. 
A, all attorneys will be drug and alcohol free and comply with the terms of the Tribe Drug Free Workplace Act. B, all attorneys hired by the legal department will have a Juris Doctrine degree for an accredited law school and will be in good standing in at least one state in which they are licensed. A certificate of good standing shall be provided to the tribal council prior to an interview. C, additionally, the in-house attorney must comply with the following condition. One, obtain a license to practice in the Oglala Sioux Tribal Court before accepting a position. Two, remain state and tribally licensed and in good standing during the term of the appointment. If the attorney is subject to discipline by his or her prospective state or tribal bar association and the result is suspension or disbarment from the practice of law, that attorney cannot serve the tribe during the period of suspension and will, be not, will not be paid during that period of suspension. If disbarred, the attorney will be deemed terminated by operation of law. D, the attorney will have a maximum of five years of legal experience specializing in Indian law and must have demonstrable legislation experience. Six, general requirements and duties of the attorneys. A, the attorneys will work full time for a legal department unless they are appointed on a temporary or part time basis. They may work remotely, however, they are required to attend meetings as assigned and to be in the office for at least two days, two other full working days each week. B, the attorneys cannot take on outside work unless that work was started before their appointment and they owe an ethical duty to close a case at issue. C, the legal department will not handle tax matters, retirement plans, patent or trademark matters, insurance claims, or other specialized areas of law that require the assistance of an outside expert. Unless the attorney possesses the requisite expertise, D, the attorneys will not represent or provide legal advice to the Tribal Gaming Commission or the Election Commission. E, the attorneys will not represent or provide any legal service to any tribal office officer or council member for actions taken outside the scope of his or her official duties. F, the attorney will not represent or provide legal service to any tribally charter corporation or business. G, the attorneys will not represent or provide any legal advice to any individual tribal member without authorization of the tribal council. H, the attorneys must notify both the office manager and tribal council when a proposed assignment presents a time conflict or other conflict with that attorney's pre-existing workload. I, each attorney will serve two standing tribal council committees. If an attorney cannot attend a committee meeting, that attorney must so notify the committee chair, secretary, and office manager and arrange to obtain any assignment from the secretary along with any supporting document, sad minutes. Seven, will. Services to the members of Ogallala Sioux Tribal Yate. A, the legal department shall provide general wills, services to the Ogallala Sioux Tribal Yate. B, the, Ogallala, the legal department will host a will clinic in each district once a year. Section eight, assignment of work to legal department. A, only the following entities may assign cases and other work assignments to legal department. One, OST president. Two, OST tribal council. Three, outstanding OST standing committees. Four, executive committee. B, all cases or work assignments will be referred directly to the office manager and appropriate attorney. Annual appointment for the Ogallala Sioux Tribal Legal Department. A, the tribal council finds that in order to promote a stable legal department staffed with qualified individuals, 
And because of the remoteness of the tribal officers, the short shortage of housing on Pine Ridge Indian Reservation, the personnel will be paid as follows. In-house up to 150,000 per year, per attorney negotiable based on experience. Office manager paralegal, 70,000 per year plus fringe benefits. Legal secretary, 45,000 per year plus fringe benefits. File clerk, receptionist, 30,000 a year plus fringe benefits. Be the office manager was submit on operating budget for the legal department to the finance committee annually. Section nine, agreement with outside law firms or attorneys. A, it is recognized that the tribe will need to retain the specialized service of outside counsel to handle cases and other legal matters for the tribe. B, the in-house attorney will be the preferred option for staff and tribal council and standing committee meetings and drafting resolution ordinances. C, the tribal council may confer with the in-house attorney regarding work local capabilities in the areas of legal expertise <laughs> requiring outside counsel before making an assignment to attorneys outside the legal department, but not required to do so. Section 10, repeal a prior inconsistent ordinance and resolution. This ordinance rescinds and supersedes ordinance number 16-25 as amended in its entirety. Now, therefore, be it ordained that this ordinance will become effective on data is approved by tribal That. What's the purpose of changing the name of the legal department? Changing the name for what? How I thought it was changing the same the one. Name? Okay. So if we're changing things, it looks like to me we're just kind of giving a raise <laughs> in a roundabout way. No, oh, it just goes by the budget. David, can you just sit there and be quiet until we get all this done? <laughs> so, um, thank you. Uh, uh, further questions? Uh, Council, uh, Councilman Whitehorse, did you, did you have a hand up? Okay, then Councilman Steele. Thank you. Um, Chairman Watkins, I don't see the special attorneys on here. The special attorneys, this like Hobbs Joss and Because they're not listed under the legal department. And they should be. They're not listed under the legal department. Okay, and there's two section eights. Um, so, so that section eight, so that second one be section nine? Is that what? Uh, is yeah. that how it should read? Okay. Nine, and then, then 10, then 10, 11. 11. So there should be 11 sections. Okay. And then, Councilwoman, your uh, question on section nine slash 10, uh, is that covered the, the outside legal? Um, yeah, but I, there's, I don't see anything either that, you know, when we hire a special attorney and, and they work on different projects, 
Normally we just have to have a motion from committee and then here it says that there has to be a motion from council. I'm just trying to find it, but I can't find it. You just read um, it. So would that be in section eight? Like only the following entities may assign cases other than work assignments to legal department. Uh, President, OST Travel Council, number three, OST Standing Committee. Okay. Okay. I, I mean, that's the way I read it, so. Plans, but it has to stay in their budget. But um, it was never brought up to raise anybody's pay. But it says this ordinance will take effect immediately once passed. So why don't you just change that section, the new section nine? The Tribal Council finds that in order to promote a stable legal department staff to qualified individuals. That they will be paid according to the, the budget set forth by the Tribal Council. We can amend and it that way, take Chairman. The rest. Okay, no, that's okay. It's all to be amended. Um, with that wording, I think the secretary took a note. Um, Councilman Steele, then Councilman Carlo. Thank you, Chair. I think, um, you know, I don't know, um, maybe sometime in the near future, we need to do some type of halftime review on our attorneys because I'm a little upset with, you know, the production of a few of our attorneys. You know, we give them things to work on and we still don't see them back. And, you know, I'm tired of questioning, you know, where our projects are, you know, that we, we've assigned them. So I, I'd, I'd hope we could look at that in the near future, doing some time, uh, some type of re halftime review of our attorneys, because, you know, it's not worth the dollar we're paying, I'll tell you that right now. Okay, sorry. Um, that that was actually um, Lisa, so she she's trying to call in. Um, Councilman Carlo, I'm not sure if it's a question for Lisa or not, but question is so, like some of these positions in here, does that mean that those have to be advertised also? Of course. I, I believe that the office manager was a position that we put on contract. So according to the way this reads, they, we would um, have to advertise that position. And I, I, I think that it's, with taking that out, then those would need to fall under the um, salary scale as well because right now these are a little above the salary scale. Just a little. Um, okay, um, so Councilwoman Gwetka. You know, I think that with the office manager uh, slash paralegal, I think uh, if the council remembers, the chief of staff came forward and moved her under I think her office to do extra duties or something. And that's why I think her pay went up. That position's pay went up. So I think Lisa needs to, if she, is she online? Could she answer some of these questions? She's trying to get on, so. Uh, Cause I think we need to hear from her 
uh, as to all these questions being asked on this uh, on this uh, resolution ordinance, and that she understands that if we have to, we're going to have to advertise because that's her position, right? And okay. Okay. Lunch break. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe we should actually take a lunch break and then let Lisa get on, and then um, then we'll come back. Uh, Councilman Carlo, do you have something for? Us? Thank you, Chairman. I was gonna make a motion to table this and um, bring it back at the at the <laughs> at the next meeting. I think there's just too many questions right now, so that'll be my motion, Mr. Chair, is to table. Okay, motion to table, seconded by Councilman. Puyer, uh, it's non-debatable motion. Secretary, call the vote, please. Wesley Hawkins, Sr. Oh. Blaine Little Thunder. Oh. Cora Whitehorse. Yes. Ryan Jumpin' Eagle, Sr. Yes. Gerald Kenoyer, Jr. Yes. Austin Watkins, Sr. Tyler Yellowboy. Yes. Wendell Youngman, Jr. Yes. Ron Dubray. Oh. James Cross. Yes. Ella John Carlo. Yes. George Dreamer Jr. Yes. Julianne Spotted Bear. Yes. Richard Ironcloud. Yes. David Puyer. Yes. Sonia Little Hawk Weston. Ha. Huh. Jackie Sears. Uh huh. Michael Carlo Sr. Yes. Garfield Steele. Yes. Craig, Craig Dillon. Yes. Okay, that most passed unanimously. Twenty-four zero against. Thank you. Um, so we'll we'll do a meal or do a do a meal now. So, um, um, Councilman Jemer, do you want to do the meal prayer, and then we'll go to, and then we'll come back at one fifteen. Um, thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, thank you for this day. Thank you for this prayer, Father. We ask that you bless this food and hands that prepared it. Give the nourishments for our mind, body, and soul to serve you better spiritually. And Father, just keep the ones in prayer that are struggling right now. And cover them, Father, with your love and your, your mercy. Thank you. Amen. Uh, thank you. So we'll come back at, at 115, everyone. 